To truly take your car audio builds to the next level, you need to have precise fitment between your template inserts to allow for the upholstery materials you will use. I'm currently building this down firing box and I'm at the point that I need to get my pieces to fit together. What cuts do I make to prep my pieces for upholstery and how did I make these acrylic pieces? That and more is coming on up my friends, let's get started. Here are the shapes that I've created to attach to this custom subwoofer enclosure. Now it's one thing to make these shapes. I've covered making the shapes in several of my videos before. I'll put a link to a couple down in the video description. What I want to focus on in this video because I get a lot of questions about it is how we precisely make each of these shapes fit into each other. The fitment of the different pieces together is something that I still see a lot of people struggle with. People are starting to understand how to make the shapes but not so much how to design them so that they fit together and get a perfect fit when they're wrapping it with these different vinyls and carpets and even doing paint and that sort of thing. I'm gonna remove some of these other pieces. We'll talk about these guys later. But for now, I wanna focus on these two starting pieces that are going to attach like this to the front of the enclosure. When you're adding an insert onto an enclosure, you obviously want to form it into the box so that you can transition, in my case, between carpet and vinyl. You wanna have somewhere for that material to tuck into a gap. Now the first way you can do that is you can just make this shape like so, and then you take a foam tape like this that has a thickness. This is about 1 16th of an inch thick. You would apply a couple layers of that tape to this edge. You would secure this to the enclosure. You would then take body filler and smooth it out, and then once it dried, you would sand it out, and then you would pop this off, you would remove that tape, and now you have a nice precise gap between the two layers. Now the second way you can do this is I like to stay away from using body filler because it does take time to cure. You do have to spend time sanding it. So instead what I've done is I've basically made this same piece. I've expanded it with a gap of about 3 16ths of an inch, which is gonna be perfect for my carpet to vinyl transition. And that chamfered look that we would have got from sanding the body filler, I can just do that precisely on the router by adding a 45 degree chamfer to this piece. This piece is a half inch thick, and when I made it, I expanded the shape a half inch. So that means when I do a 45 degree cut on the outside of it, it's just gonna be completely a triangle profile if you were to look at the cross section. In other words, when I cut this piece using the chamfer bit, I'm gonna have to have it extended to this full height here. And I need a surface for this bearing to ride against. So I'm actually gonna stick this to a quarter inch piece of wood. I'm gonna flush trim it on the router and then I'll have some material that that bearing can ride against. By doing those quick few steps, I now have a perfect negative pocket that our positive shape can fit inside of and I don't have to bother with any body filler, any extra sanding. I can just attach this to the box. With this attached, you can see we have a nice perfect transition that requires no sanding, and we have a nice perfect gap for our transition from carpet to vinyl. Now I need to start focusing my attention on this piece. This piece here is gonna have two separate pieces of acrylic that are gonna be made using these template shapes. One is gonna have my logo, but it's going to sit behind that shape. And then this piece here is going to have some grill mesh attached to it and it's also going to sit behind. But the problem is right now there's no clearance on this piece for those pieces to fit behind. You can see that it fits flush against this face. In order to add that step, I'm gonna be using what's called a rabbiting bit. This cuts a notch into the material and rides against the edge of the original shape. And now you can see once we're done and we flip the piece back over, this is the cut that it made. It made this little groove section. And now I have a nice clearance for what will be my acrylic piece there as well as here. Now, as of right now, this edge here, along with this edge around the logo insert, it's just a hard corner. It doesn't really look like it belongs. We definitely want to smooth that out. So for that, I think I'm going to use a roundover bit. I'll go with this guy here. Nice little quarter inch roundover. Now that I've added that roundover, definitely looks a lot more smooth. Looking good. Next, I wanna show you guys some special techniques for cutting acrylic. Before we do that though, I wanna show you something cool from my show sponsor, New Concepts. These guys right here, speaker pants. 
When we meticulously build every aspect of our install, we want our wire ends to look clean and professional too. The new concept speaker pants work perfect for this. They work for both round wire or wire that is side by side and come in two or four conductor versions. Available for several wire sizes, you simply slide these over the end of your wire, adding a nice finished appearance to your install. A special thanks to New Concepts for being a channel sponsor. Learn more about the speaker pants and their wire and some of their different wire distribution parts down in the video description. Let's get back into cutting the acrylic. Now the trick to cutting acrylic is using the right tools and the right process. I start with tracing the shape onto the acrylic using a marker and then I use this special jigsaw bit that's made for cutting acrylics in order to rough cut the plastic. Once the plastic is rough cut, I stick the shape to the acrylic using some double-sided template tape. And then I'm using this special flush trim bit that's again specifically made for cutting acrylics on the router. This gives me a perfectly cut piece of acrylic that once I separate from my template, it's hard to see in there right now, obviously because it's clear, you can see that reflection, but once I paint it, it's gonna look awesome. In the meantime, I also created this piece that goes down near the bottom and will have the grill mesh attached to it. Now I did decide to go with a slightly thicker acrylic, so I cut some new pieces using the same process off camera, but you can see here I am now painting the back side of them. My camera battery died at the worst time, but I used that brush to brush the back side of that black paint, and then I'm following up with using a silver paint after I removed the decals for my logo. You'll see why I did this in a little bit. While the paint is drying, here I still have a bit more woodworking to do I need to attach this piece this is gonna be the same process as how I did this piece I want to add a little bit of a chamfer in this case I'm gonna do a little bit more of a steep chamfer this is a 22 and a half degree bit I'm using something that's a little bit more steep because this is more thin I use CA glue to glue this in place just like this one so now my insert can go in and it's not gonna move this will press fit in once we wrap the carpet in and paint this piece. And speaking of carpet, that's the next thing that I need to start to consider here. The problem is because of these curves here, I can't just wrap this with one entire piece. It would start to bunch up on the sides. So what I need to do is I need to make a channel on the sides in order to allow for a relief cut where I can tuck the carpet into that channel and then have a separate piece of carpet that comes here and also tucks into that channel. I'll then transition that relief cut to the back. I've actually already made made the relief cut on the back here. Let me show you how I did that. To make that groove, I'm using my handheld plunge router. You can see that I have an offset bearing on the bottom of the base here, along with a straight cutting bit. That offset bearing allows me to ride against the edge of a template that I'll stick to the box like this and then I can follow that template around. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna template tape it in place. I've carefully measured where it needs to be and then I'll be able to make this cutting pass, thus giving me that groove. There we have it, a nice transition line that I can use for cutting the carpet. At this point, the paint is now dry. Let's see what it looks like. With those pieces in place, you start to get an idea how this is gonna look, but remember I mentioned that I did wanna add some metal mesh. In order to do this, I'm tracing out my template shape and then carefully cutting it using some shears, and then I'm actually going to paint this metal mesh black. After the paint has dried, I secure the metal mesh to the back side of my acrylic piece using some CA glue. So here we have it, my friends. What do you guys think? Coming up, I'll be wrapping this box with carpet and doing the vinyl on the insert. To see that video, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Don't forget to check out the new concept speaker pants for your next wiring installation. Finally, a thank you to Anthony, Bernard, John, Brian, Thomas, Jeremy, Doug, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching.